that's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about 13 Ghosts, the 2001 film directed by Steve Beck, uh, which was, of course, a remake of William Castle's 1960 film, which actually used the numerals for the title. Uh, and like the weird inventive thing they're trying to do here, uh, it uh, will be released courtesy of Screen Factory on Blu-ray for a collector's edition. Uh, it's July. Screen Factory or Shout Factory? Sh it's Shout Factory, but their horror label is Screen Factory. Oh, sorry. I so didn't I'll, know that. I'll just, I'll I don't just, normally pay attention. I don't know why I piped up today. It's okay. Uh, it, but Screen Factory is on all the press materials. So okay. uh, July 28th, 2020, it will be available on Blu-ray. Can you try to explain the story? <laughs> First off, I thought this was a fun enough movie. To watch it's the, ridiculous. To watch we watched the, it with uh, two friends. That love heckling as much as we do. So I think that <laughs> kind of amped it up a little bit. But anyway, the story is... The story is about a power-hungry man who, through the use of a ghost hunter, is able to hunt ghosts. So, and he needs the, a particular 12, or he has a particular 12, but he needs a 13th that he has locked up in uh, a house that... Uh, w was built by the devil and uh, driven by the dead, I believe is the line, and that once he gets that 13th uh, ghost victim in there, then all of them will be released and it will... Wreak havoc on the world? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I guess If I you want the d detailed plot, go to Wikipedia, I guess. I guess I don't understand what, like, what happens when... I don't understand what the purpose was. Oh, it's to see the eye of something in, in, okay. in, in Hades. So the... <laughs> So he's evil, but so the man. F. Murray Abraham. Plays the man who built this glass house mm -hmm. where he has uh, imprisoned these ghosts. Mm -hmm. And he uses the kid from Scream. Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard plays a ghost hunter, but he's also like a psychic or like a medium. Mm, yeah. Right? Because he can like feel and see things, whatever. He uses him to help like entrap these ghosts and lock them up. His nephew... Is played by Tony Shaloub. Tony Shaloub. So Tony Shaloub has a daughter played by Shannon Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. He has a son. A little boy named Bobby. They're having financial difficulties. They live in a very cramped apartment, but somehow they have a nanny played by Raw Digga. <laughs> In you her, may know from her stint with the Flip Mode Squad. And uh, in her uh, on-screen debut. Wow. Uh, and that's the only film she's done since then. Wow. Uh, she's actually a year younger than Shannon Elizabeth, but she's babysitting The Shannon, kids Shannon, who are Shannon Elizabeth and then like a 8 or 10-year-old. In a cramped apartment that they've had to move into because Tony Shalhoub's wife died in a horrible fire. <laughs> yeah. So... A lawyer approaches them and says, like, it's your lucky day. You've inherited this home. Mm -hmm. Let's go see it. So it's like this ornate glass mansion. Mm -hmm. with, with Latin, which I read was actually the Lord's Prayer written over and over again. Oh, interesting. With yeah, Latin it has, like, the scripture all over the house. Even to get into the house, like, the key looks like this really ornate key that opens up this very mechanical like door that takes a very long time to unlock. It's very Hellraiser-y. Yeah, when they walk in, there doesn't appear, like it's just like this huge, like the foyer is like just this huge space with all these glass walls. There's a big like a machine. Mm -hmm. Like the centerpiece is this like, sort of like timepiece looking thing that ends up turning into what looks like the intro to Tyler Perry films, but, <laughs> right? It doesn't mm -hmm. look just like that. Yeah, the, uh, like, it looks like a big clock. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Matthew Lillard is there waiting for them when they show up. And he's Probably. pretending to be like a power company mm -hmm. repair person. And he says, I need to get in there and check things out. But once he get it, gets in there, he tells Tony Shalhoub's character, actually, I used to work for your uncle. I'm a ghost hunter. This house is evil. You cannot let blah, 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 blah happen. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but of course... The kids go running off. Raw Digga goes running off. They get into some trouble, so now they have to go save them. And the bulk of the movie is them trying to escape the house because the ghosts are hunting them. Mm -hmm. But what didn't quite make sense to me is, so there are these, like, glasses everywhere that look like safety goggles with little headlights on mm -hmm. them. And you cannot see the ghost unless you're wearing the glasses. Mm -hmm. But they seem to be safe when they're not wearing the glasses. It's when they put the glasses on that they see them and they get into trouble. <laughs> And technically, only one of the ghosts can actually cause harm, which is the Juggernaut one, which is the one that kills Matthew Lillard. 
But those glasses are the only thing that's retained from the original film. Like, oh. that's the only... <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... I can't remember what else happened. <laughs> How does it end? They end up... The, the ghosts are end up freed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they all get away. What's the twist? The tw- Oh, the twist is the evil uncle... Is not dead. He's not dead. And Tony Shalhoub's wife, who died in the fire, is one of the ghosts in the house. And they need... The 13th ghost has to demonstrate like an act of love or something? That it has to be a willing sacrifice, yeah. So, so he's able to get him because of his this wife. This whole thing has been an elaborate ruse, ruse to get Tony Shalhoub in there to be the schlub that, that does it. The point of us telling the plot is not the point, because you can just read it, I guess. Um, so what's good about the film? It's made in what, 2000? It's 2001. The visuals and the special effects are, like, they hold up. The production design certainly, uh, yeah, the set looks great. Uh, some of the makeup on some, on the, uh, some of the ghosts are quite well done. Uh, and, you know, shout out to Gregory Nicotero, uh, who worked on this film, who uh, Alexander Aja used a lot, like in High Tension and okay. uh, Hills Have Eyes, etc. So, yeah, like, some, some of those look great. Okay. That's about it. Yeah, that is about it. Okay. The st- I think the casting... Before you go in on that, this is actually known, notable for being the first uh, studio film to feature three Arab Americans. Oh. Which are Tony Shalhoub, F. Marie Abraham, and Shannon Elizabeth. Okay. Because her father was Syrian Lebanese. That's cool. Yeah, in- that's interesting. Um... Okay, the casting, so then I guess segue to the casting, I thought was not good. The evil uncle is like this corny villain. But F. Marie Abraham. Like out of a cartoon. Who won his Oscar for playing a corny villain in Salieri and Amadeus. Sure, but it, it, it just feels very like, I don't know. He's giving it to you, you know. He's trying, I guess. Tony Shalhoub. Because I guess it takes an imbecile to like, like, yeah. like that character has to be kind of dumb to think like this is like well that, that's so stupid this script is terrible it's cause, so they just pack they're like you have a house they don't go look at it first they just move <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth is too old to to be like well first of all the family dynamics really weird like yes. why is Rod Digger there playing a babysitter who's like terrible at it <laughs> um, yeah and why is she like when you have this Shannon Elizabeth character why can't she take care of the kid? Yeah, you're already in a cramped apartment complaining about space. and So that already set up for like a dynamic that is just like, like I was just rolling my eyes like this is so dumb. The Rod Diggins, like her acting and the characterization was just like... Well, she lot. hardly gets any lines and they're always really... And every line is like... Did the lawyer split? Because we see him get chopped in half by glass doors and it's like... Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, just the story is really dumb, but... I guess this film's getting a re-release because I'm sure it has a some cult following. I think there's... And the, vi- like the, the visuals do hold up, so I think it has merit. And after this one, this version's now nearly 20 years old, I think there's some nostalgia for even that period of genre I was, filmmaking. So the other thing that didn't work for me is I remember watching this film when it came out, and I thought I remembered the film going through like the lore of each ghost, but it doesn't. And I thought when we finished this film last night, it, it, it could stand to have another remake. And I think the remake should focus more on the actual ghosts. Because that was the most interesting part. Like seeing the ghost and wondering, like, how does he have all these spikes through him? How does she end up in a cage? Why is the other one all cut up? We spent so much time. There's even once, like, we pointed it out where we're divorced from the characters and just kind of wandering strangely through the halls of one scene. But we've already seen them, these hallways ad nauseum. Like, let's. Why are we even seeing that? Um, yeah, more the ghost, the character. You know, poor little M. Beth Davids, who plays this woman who um, oh, is, she's... is working on behalf of the ghosts, like, to, to free them, like a social worker for the ghosts, basically, to, to free them from their purgatory. And she's given this really chunky Meg Ryan and City of Angels. I mean, it's very 2001, so that's yeah. fair. Um, but, that, the, you know, it's the script and the acting. It's very... Yeah, the story's dumb. Uh I guess the only other benefit to this re-release is there are some extra features, one of which is a like Q&A with Shannon Elizabeth, mm-hmm. which is worth watching mm-hmm. because she talks about her like decision to be in the film 
uh, which to me was like, you know, you probably at that point her career would just do anything, right? So <laughs> it's funny to hear her try to explain it. And then also she talks about her role, like how she contributed to the like, the writing and the directing, like how she was allowed to give a lot of input. Yeah, about which I think is funny because she doesn't have a writing or directing credit. So yeah, apparently director Steve Beck was very open to all her suggestions. It's and... it's funny listening to her talk about it. So I would definitely, if you do pick up this film, it's worth watching that. She um, also looks great. She does look great. Uh, this is one of the few William Castle originals I haven't seen, and I do think you know because he's a ham, so it really isn't sacrilege to remake a William Castle film. But it's like if you're going to do that elevated in some way. And it is elevated in like the production value. Yeah. But I think the next remake that might happen hopefully one day would elevate the writing. Because like even because House on Haunted Hill was remade before this. Mm. Oh with Catherine Zeta-Jones? No that's The Haunting oh. which is a remake of a Robert Wise film which is a Shirley Jackson novel. Uh, no the, the Fomke Johnson and Tate Diggs I believe are in The House oh. on Haunted Hill. And we've actually seen the original one with Vincent Price at um, Rift Tracks Theater Okay. experience years ago now okay. um, so I don't know I, I, I do want to go back and watch the original 13 Ghosts uh, Margaret Hamilton who played Wicked Witch of the West is in it um, I don't know because this was very disappointing well we can wrap this up what would you give it? Uh, the film uh, 1 out of 5 okay I would give it 2 out of 5 okay generous uh, the Blu-ray release uh, you know it, it looks good uh, three out of five. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.